Hey, good to see you. I'm John Zadar. On behalf of PB Alerts, we welcome you to Zadar Stock Trading Insights. I like to take the time to share certain things that I think could help people when trading, especially on the OTC markets. I spend a lot of time there. One of my favorite places to go for legitimate, up-to-date information is the otcmarkets.com site. So this is my number one go-to site when trading OTC stocks, penny stocks. Now when I say penny stocks, do not think for a minute that all the stocks are cheap. I trade penny stocks and sub penny stocks because of the action. They can move very quickly, but these stocks can range hundreds, thousands, even tens of thousands of dollars on the OTC market. There are every kind of stock imaginable from, as you can see on the screen, Heineken, to Adidas, to EasyJet, to L'Oreal, to Yamaha, any foreign company, all of them, no matter how big they are, most of them are right here. Lots and lots of banks. This is not just some penny and penny stock land though I like to trade a lot of those now this is the front page right here they give you a lot of information just to keep up you know like MSN or anybody else does they've got news current events that you may want to keep up on they have articles that they write themselves down here I don't normally tap into these but when I do I'm never let down what I primarily use this site for and don't let that overwhelm you Everything here in the middle, corporate services, OTC links, and market data, these three are primarily for corporations, businesses, brokers, things as such, not investors. So don't worry about any of that. Primarily, you want to look at most of this. Not all of this even matters. I'll show you where I go and tap in for some really good information. And then this last one, this will give you uh, information, definitions, laws, uh, warnings even. I can show you a couple of those too. Now first, I come here every single day. I put up one page primarily and I sit on that page all day until I need to leave because it helps me monitor a lot of news and that is the news. Now this page does update and keep all the information live and real time as long as you update the page manually. It does not real time update and change like a chart would. You have to click the button. But the three primary things this page shows that I keep up with are news releases. News is coming out on the minute it pops up here at the top as long as you refresh the page. I won't say that anymore. <laughs> And the great thing I like about the news, there are three categories when it comes to the OTC market. You have the pinks, the QBs, and the QX. You can think of them as good, better, and best. These are, well, these are the best stocks there can be. They have all their filings, all the transparency you could require from a NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange stock. The QB are good stocks. These are great stocks. They Most of them have moved up from the pink to here, uplisted, to show off that they're a good company. This is a great place for a pink to venture out. And then you have pinks, which is where all the subpenny stocks are, which is where the ghetto stocks are, the ones you hear the worst stories about. Yes, they're in there. There are also lots and lots of other great companies. I primarily look for companies that are under a dollar, even under a penny, just because of the volatility and how quickly they can move. I can buy it on double zero one. When it hits double zero two, I've doubled my entire investment. I get excited about that. All right, going back to where we were. So with that in mind, I can come over here to the news and sort the news, which I can't do on any other site I have ever found. The best stocks, the better stocks, or just the pinks. And I can get news just on the pinks. And if you click that more button down at the bottom, it will just continue to kick out the news in chronological order. And you can see everything that is going on just like that. The next piece of important information are the financial reports. Now I've been watching these primarily because there has been a SEC ruling that says any company that is dark and defunct, caveat emptar, pink no information is getting booted off of the live markets and being pushed down to the gray and the experts where people like me and you have a very difficult time buying them if we want to. It's possible, just not easy. And right now we can keep up with the financials as soon as they are filed, you can see them here. But 
every day I like to go gold hunting right here in the SEC filings. This is every other filing, including the financials that is put in here. Uh, S1s, which are your uplistings. If you see an S here, it means that they have filed to uplist. You might see it here before you see it in the news. But what do I particularly come here for? I come to look at 8Ks. 8Ks are for material change. Now this can be anything from a new executive being hired or fired. It could actually just be mentioning a press release that has value. But a lot of times it talks about a merger or a joint venture or something they're buying or adding, something they're getting which is going to give them more value. And again, it will be here in the filings in many cases before it's even released as news. And to show you how easy this is, it's not like getting a shovel and digging deep into the dirt to find gold. That's a lot of work. This is more like flipping a rock or a board to see if there's a toad underneath it. Because all you got to do is click that 8K button. This right here is the entire thing you just saw. That's the entire form right there. And everything above this line, you really don't have any interest in. This one paragraph right here is all you're going to need to find. That's it. Was there a toad under the board or was there a silver coin? In this particular one, they're talking about uh, a share purchase agreement with Option Gurney Limited. So they got some sort of purchase agreement here with another company. Now, I'm not interested in this company, but that sounds like something I'd be looking into. Two companies coming together. Good information. And this company, uh, let's see, this was um, Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse. Now, do we see any news over here for Dark Pulse? Uh, not right offhand. There may be. My point here, though, again, is that there may be a financial release of this endeavor before there is a press release, which would put you ahead of the game to know what was going on. So I love this page. I find a lot of very good current information. And speaking of current information, you can also come over here to current market status. If you don't have a chart, if you don't have a screener, if you can't search for stocks that are moving, this is a great place to get some information. They categorize these in three categories, most active, advancers, and decliners. Now, sounds pretty obvious. Uh, you can look at most active on different areas, and this is important. You might be wanting to know which company is getting the most money spent on them today, or as I like to look at, which company is getting the most trades. A lot of people only look at volume in shares to see how many shares are moving. Well, when you're dealing in subpenny stocks, $100 can get you 100,000 shares if you bought it at double zero one. So we're going to have tons of shares. So that's not the greatest way to look at it. So personally, I like to look at the trades right here. And this tells me which company has the most trades happening. And obviously the most trades to me means the most interest. But you could go by volume of shares or volume of dollar. The next one they have is advancers. And this can go just for over a dollar, over a nickel, or all of them. Now I want to point something out here that you're not going to have to deal with very long. You see all of these stop signs and these double diamonds? Those are bad. That's very bad. The stop sign is a pink no information. That means they're not filing. They're late filing and haven't even tried to catch up. Bad situation. The double diamonds is short for skull and crossbone, also known as CE caveat emptor, buyer beware. OTC markets, if you go look in that information where they teach you stuff, they will tell you that they even mark these companies as possible scam artists trying to take advantage of their investors. So these companies are in bad shape, they're negligent, they could be on super hard times, but usually it's the case they're just negligent and they're not doing what they're supposed to. Why do I say it's going to change? Well, back in December in 2020, the SEC made a ruling for all OTC market stocks. If they are not current, pink, you can see pink right there at the top. That's what you're supposed to be. If you have not got pink gums, you are leaving and being isolated in the penalty box, the expert or gray market. They are still for sale, but they are very difficult to get. They are not listed on the open market. You have to call your broker and basically qualify to buy these stocks. 
they get their stuff together, they'll come back on the market. So if you own any of them and get trapped when they get pulled, it's just going to be a waiting game for you, hopefully, because they can lose their status. Some of these companies haven't been heard from in 10 years and can't be contacted, and they're all going to disappear. So what are you looking at right now? These were the number one stocks on the last day of last week. These are the number one stocks in the OTC market. They made the most profits, 388% down here at the bottom, up to 5,000%. The these are gamblers. People like to gamble on these. They buy millions of shares and they figure if this thing just reaches a half a penny or gets to double zero one. Like I said, if you buy a double zero one and you let it go to double zero two, which is only one tick, you've doubled your entire investment. When it hits three, you've tripled it. If you buy it on double zero four, it's got all the way to double zero eight to double your money. But again, the velocity of movement down here is very quick and percentages are high and people are gambling to get home runs on one swing down here and they're all going to disappear. We won't see this after September 28th. That is the cutoff for these companies. All right. And the last one, well, you know what decliners are. Why would you want to even know which ones are losing the most money? Well, the truth is a lot of people like to buy a stock after it's crashed, fallen, for whatever. It could have had a bad earnings report. They could have been 10% under their projected earnings, but it falls 40% on the market. That's a deal. That is going to recover and get itself straight in due time. So you see it here, you recognize it, you follow that lead. This is all information that you can use if you're in the mind to. All right, so what else do I make use of over here? Well, You've got some information over here at Corporate Actions, which is always interesting. Uh, this is stuff that the company is doing with their stock. It could be symbol changes or a ticker change or a company name change. You can keep up with all of that here. Now, one important fact that I have not mentioned yet is that there is penny stock exempt. What is penny stock exempt? Well, let's pull up a stock here that probably is right there, Heineken. There we go, penny stock exempt. Penny stock exempt is a stock that sells on the OTC market but does not have to oblige by all of the house rules. These aren't minors anymore. They've proven that they're adults. They handle their responsibilities. They file their paperwork. They have money in the bank. They're qualified to not be penny stocks yet they cannot qualify to sell on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange because most of them are foreign. And there are other stipulations that can restrict a company from getting on the major exchanges and this is where they'll be. And the QX might as well be a New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ stock because they qualify in all transparency. Now when you click the penny stock here, you get only three reasons that a company can exempt itself if the share price is over five dollars that is one if they've made six million dollars average for three years or they've been in business for at least three years and have two million dollars or got five million and been in business for less than three million basically the bottom line is you're not broke and you're not a startup company that's all they really want to make sure of before they graduate companies on up to this status. And this allows them a lot more leeway. Now, since we are here looking at a stock, this is a perfect place to look up individual stocks because this is the place that FINRA and SEC, the SEC, says all information must be. This is where it's housed. This is where it comes. Why? For you and me. This is how they keep it transparent and safe for us. One secure location to get your legitimate, factual, actual information. The OTCmarkets.com. They are a company. They are listed on the market. You can invest in the OTCmarkets.com. And they run this like a business. They make suggestions to FINRA often on what could be changed about the market to make it better. So there's a lot going on here. Now looking at this stock, you get their ticker name, the company name, the price of the stock and how much it's moved. 
what market they are on, and down here you'll get any special qualifications or warnings. It may say shell risk, it may say prohibited provider, which would be their lawyer or their CPA or somebody like that has a criminal record or just got in trouble. Um, they'll give you a verified profile, transfer agents verified, lots of information that you need to know will be listed here. Then on this page right here, at the top, you're gonna to get real-time quotes. Now the reason I bring this up is because not everybody gives this to you. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at this company over here, INCC. INCC is a pink, they're current, but look, their real-time level quote is not opened. Why is that? Because the OTC market charges these companies $3,000 to turn this on for me and you. You can call that shareholder value. When the company invests in a tool that you and I can use to monitor the purchases and the sales, because that is what level two is all about. It is the line, the queue for the people buying or selling their stock. And it shows you how many and how much they want or are selling for. So this is the before, and then down here, your trade data is the after. You can see how many shares were sold at what time. So you can keep up with that information. Now they do have charts. I'm not particularly crazy about these charts, so I can't tell you anything about them, but they're there if you wanna figure them out. Along on this page, which is a quick glance page, I love this page. They show you the most recent news. If anything came out, you'll see it right here, and you can click on that news and get it here. You don't have to go anywhere else. Now sometimes it'll come up, other times you have to click a link in here to actually see it. It may be a PDF, it may be the news thing itself, but whatever it is, it will be for you right there. You can also see any filings that came out. So if you're only looking for one company and you don't wanna search for gold nuggets, flipping over rocks and boards to see if there's a toad or a coin, you can come to your stock and right down here, you'll see the most recent filings and you can see if there's a 8K there. And again, all you gotta do is push the button and the report is gonna be at your fingertips, just like that. Very handy. Why run around to a million sites all over the internet with people who are dealing with old information, outdated, uh, you gotta pay for it, only members get to see it. Look, there's no memberships here at otcmarkets.com. It's free, it's for the investors who invest on the OTC market. And the funny thing is you can look up stocks that are not on the OTC market and get their information here too. So that is another fantastic thing. Now across the top here, you're gonna get various information inputs. And I like a few of these, like company profile, though it seems pretty basic, is very informative. You get their name, address, and phone number. I like the address and phone number. When dealing with subpenny stocks, I can put the address or the phone number in the Google search and sometimes find that another company is also using it and I get a heads up that there's a merger. Mm. Down here you get uh, financial information, their latest reports and all that good stuff. Company contacts, the board of directors, uh, you normally get a lot of information. There's not much here, I don't know why, maybe it's because it's foreign. You normally get all their directors, CEOs, you get the name of the lawyers that they're using, names of CPAs, this was a bad, a bad example for you. But all that information sits here. Now one of the key ingredients that I'm after here, that I need for my trades is to know the share count and they give it to you right here. You can see how many authorized shares there are. That means the total amount that they have in the bank. How many does the company have? This company has 288 million. Outstanding shares tells you how many they've already put on the shelf. How many are for sale? Well, in this case, all of them. <laughs> That's normally not the case. And then the most important part to me is the float. The float tells you how many are for us. See, the outstanding shares are all the shares available to the management, the insiders, and you and me. But the float are just the shares traded on the open market every single day between you and me. And if there's not a lot of shares, then the price can move very quickly. If there's a ton of shares, well, there's not a lot of value. So this is a great place to come. You can also get information on dividends and splits. If they've had any, they've had none. Again, this wasn't a great company to look at, but you get the drift. 
and they show short interest. And speaking of short interest, I do believe that there is a page here, right there. I don't use this page very often, but for those of you who are interested in short interest, this is kept up to date and live. Now they've also got news here. We've already looked at the news though. You've got that here. Financials, you get a nice quick glance. Now again, this is horrible. You know, let, let me pull up another stock here. Uh, geez. Okay, it's just the first one that comes to my mind. I don't know why this just keeps coming up, but this is what you would see under financials. You get to see a couple years, you get to see the numbers all at a quick glance. The disclosures are the same thing as the financials. Uh, these are the filings and they'll show you everything here. So you can see there is lots of information and then research, they're not gonna have any, but this is when other companies do research and they'll publish it here and you can see what others think about the company. So we have all of that down here and you've got a couple other pages here. Now I don't use this one here very much, stock screener. This is a way to look at the stocks. There's quite a lot of information here. You can see which ones are penny stock exempt. You can see what country they come from, uh, if they're current, if they have problems, that's all here. Uh, if they're a bank, there are hundreds, hundreds of banks here, but I can't get pink. Pink won't come up through here. I have a hard time using this, but maybe you'll find some benefits with it. It is here to be used. And there are a couple other ones here I don't make use of, but they will tell you things like, well, let's take a look at uh, compliance statistics. This will tell you which companies have stock promotions. You know, you see an article and you see that they paid $3,000 or $20,000 to have this article paid for. And the first thing you think of is scam. Well, not true. The company actually told the OTC markets, we haven't got any new news, but we do want people to hear about us. So we're going to put out some articles. They're not press releases. They're just news about us. So here is where you can see that. So you don't have to worry about a company hyping itself or somebody else hyping it just to make money. You can actually see if there's a promotion going on. You can also see the latest changes for companies that are shell status, which means they're not doing anything that they can prove. That could be bad if they're supposed to be doing something. But if they're making their company a shell, a hollow building, they're moving out to let someone else move in like a reverse merger to take over the ticker, then being a shell company would be good. So it all depends on what they're doing and what you know. And then a good piece of information is reverse splits. These aren't just after they happen, they tell you when they're going to happen so that you can also be on top of that. Everybody hates a reverse split. Company name changes, <laughs> you go looking for a stock and you can't find it because the ticker's changed or the, the company name has changed. In case you haven't noticed, on the OTC market, this very last letter, the suffix, can sometimes have a representation that tells you about the stock. A D means it going through some sort of change. It could be a ticker change, company name change, share structure change. It will be a temporary situation. The D will fall off once all of it is completed. If you see an F, it means it's a foreign company and it will always be there. The F will not fall off. You might see a P or a Y that makes them preferred shares. If you see a Q, a Q on the end means the company is in bankruptcy. Now that's a good deal, honestly. Most companies that go bankrupt only file for bankruptcy. They normally end up restructuring, the price falls because everybody bails ship, you get it at a super duper low price, you wait patiently as the restructuring occurs and then they're back on the market at a great price and you had it at a great price, you just made a great profit. So you've got that. And then you got caveat emptor. These are the companies that have just fallen off the boat, have uh, become, you know, wanted criminals. So you can see which ones have been added and removed. It's nice to see companies removed. And normally when a company is removed, this causes the stock to jump. You'd be amazed how many of these companies have uh, groupies just hanging around waiting for something good to happen. And last but not least, suspensions and revocations. You can see the companies that are in trouble. I happen to own this one, Vape. Yes, I do. I bought that 2018 as a cannabis company. And obviously, I'm in trouble with it. I can't sell it 
you can't buy any more of it. You're just holding it until it hits the grave or gets back in good graces. So real quick, I'm not going to go through it too much, but over here is really where you can get your answers. You know, what is penny stock exempt? What are the three tiers of the OTC market? What does it take to qualify to get on the QB from the pink? You're going to get all of that over here. You're also going to get stuff that will tell you about caveat emptor. They'll warn you what exactly that means. They also have a page over here. I think it's a newsletter as a matter of fact. Investor protection maybe. Yeah, they will update you on things here. Uh, the last one was in January. But right here, there will be an update. Uh, notice of Luxembourg company fraudulently impersonating OTC market group. Uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain related stock promotion. You can get updates here on different things. Alert marijuana related securities. That's from 2016. They don't have much of them here. But there is information over here that can get you some answers. This is a good place too. Facts. Frequently asked questions. Lots of good questions over here. Questions you may not have even thought of asking. And you can get them over here. You can get the answers. So this is where I come every single day without fail to do my OTC research. Now in saying that, it is not exhaustive. It has not got every bit of information. The fact of the matter is the financials and the disclosures, all the legal papers must be put there. There's no other place to go. That's where you need to be going. But when it comes to news or articles, they can put them there. The company can put a lot of stuff there, virtually everything, or they don't have to. It can be out in the rest of the world on the internet. So. The OTC market is a great place to start to get your facts, to know what you're dealing with, who you're dealing with. And that's another thing. When you look in the OTC market, a lot of these pink sub penny stocks, penny stocks, the management could be bogus. So when you do your DD, that should be one of your primary things to study is the management. They make or break a company. They are the backbone and they, their reputation, their experience, their success, this all comes into play or their criminal records, how many uh, companies they've left in the dust behind them. You want to know that. So the OTC market tells you who your CEOs, CFOs and board members are just that easy and you can look them up on Google and get some information. See a good team, see a good product, you may have a good company. Start with the OTC because remember, the more you know, the more you grow.